Join us, friends. Great Scott Spa Guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost Spa Guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right. It is the Spa Guy, and it is... It's Globe Trotting with Trey. And we are not wishing Cotton was a monkey, but we know that there are people out there that are. Are you? I am absolutely not. <laughs> I know so, Spock guys, not. I can tell you that. I, I can tell you that. I will not wish Cotton was a monkey, even if it cost me something. Right. So today we have good friend, Famous Graves with Diamond Dave is going to be in the studio with us. And he is a JFK expert. And he is going to tell us the ins and outs of what he thinks happened. All right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, Spa Guy. All right. And uh, we're going to get him in here and let him tell us what's up. So let's bring him in the studio. Here's Dave. Hey, My name is Graves with Diamond Dave. What's happening? How you guys doing? What's uh, up, hey, Diamond Dave? Hey, thanks for having me on. I hear hey, you got a new shirt. Let me see what you got. Okay. Matter of fact, I got the name Diamond Day from the spa guy. That's what I wanted. Hey, How did you get that? Hey, I just go around the country naming people. That's yeah, what this is way back. This is what uh five years now. It's Diamond been a long Day. time. Yeah. There you go. That's cool right there. Can yeah. they buy those on your YouTube channel? Well, if they say a bunch of nice things on my channel, I'll just give them one free. Really? <laughs> yeah. uh, you want to you want to give a, uh, a disclaimer to that before we move on? <laughs> oh, the first three. The okay, first three. Is, okay, good. Uh, I say something nice about yeah. my video. Yeah, we'll it's the a, there's no way I could give away any because I rarely have anybody say anything nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I've still got a I still got a whole truckload. Yeah. And uh, not true, friends, not true. So a lot of you are really, really nice, and, and I do appreciate it, and Trey appreciates it, and Dave appreciates it. Yes. Um, hey, I'm really enjoying this new channel I started. I'm going to California once a month, filming enough for, oh, at least one video a week of celebrities, famous people that's uh, buried throughout California, Southern California. So you're only doing Cali? I recently did St. Louis because I was back. Uh, so that would be Rush. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Rush. Yeah. Rush Limbaugh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I might get down to uh, Nashville. There's a ton here. There's dead people, uh, famous dead people laying everywhere. Yeah. For real country music. Yeah. Uh, I've actually already visited George Jones's grave, but uh, plan of, but I didn't have my camera, which is a sin. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't. I can't even process that thought. <laughs> I've been accused yeah. before, Dave. I think you might have been the one that pointed it out to me one time of stalking dead people, famous <laughs> dead people. Uh, th weren't you the one that contacted me and said, right. "Hey, did you see that guy saying you were stalking famous dead people?" Yeah, that was way, way, way back. That was a long time ago. But I mean, yeah. they're they're easy to find like that. I can yeah. tell you that. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they don't go anywhere. <laughs> So, Dave, uh, how long uh, have you been studying the JFK story? Well, let me throw this in. Uh, right. When I'm doing my videos, I like to do them in one take. But I find myself saying, you'll always find so-and-so right here. Then I'm thinking, well, they're dead. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> you well, always find it. That's, yeah. that's, that's factual. That's what we like. We like facts. Yeah, but anyway, I'm having a whole lot of fun doing it. Getting the exercise. And you're getting uh, some good success with it, too. Your channel is really growing. Yeah, so far, and so they, good. Didn't you, didn't you do a video of the entire Manson family? Yes. Well, those that I can find. I mean, the ones. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. That was fun to do. I also found La Bianca's grocery store location. That was fun. That, that stuff's fun for me to do. Yeah. That's and awesome. have you that that new guy with the uh, Manson thing that that Trey actually sent me over is fascinating. The guy that his parents or his, I think his aunt and uncle uh, had the bicycle store and he ran it and he yeah. delivered a bike there that day. Yeah, that's a fascinating wait, story. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I didn't I put no, no. I I called another YouTuber about it. Uh, so Trey told you about the the, the bike guy. 
that yes. delivered a bike. Yeah. Was it you that told me? And I think it's Trey. No, no I think it was Trey. He okay. delivered to uh, Sebring the yeah. night before. Yeah. yeah. And he had plans on taking his girlfriend to a Up there to park. That's right. Yeah, he was going to park at the gate that night. That's a fascinating story. But if we get off on that, we're never going to hear about JFK. And uh, okay. yeah. and I will say this, that you believe that it was Oswald and Oswald only. Well, I just start uh, off by saying that I don't believe that, but I've not studied it like you have. And there's many people that are on both sides of it. Uh, 1986 is when I started studying about the JFK assassination. But I want to say in the beginning, I was a conspiracy theorist Okay. in the beginning. And then around 91, I converted to what we call a lone gunman believe. So we believe, I believe that Oswald shot President Kennedy uh, and acted alone. And that's not a popular opinion. No. no right. No, so so you're kind of like our, our guest from last week where you're standing on what you feel like is the truth, even if it costs you something. And so it's wigwam again. And uh, some people, so one, one of y'all is wigwam. We just don't know which one, right? Well, I am losing my hair. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, tell us about that. So, what makes you think that Oswald acted alone? Because there was so many opportunities. And what I mean is, and and I'll open this up with my with my my theory about um about four. I think four different assassinations. Okay. Can, is that fair? Are you okay with me doing that, Dave? Yeah, but I want to talk about JFK. Okay, yeah, but I want to just give a comparison, and then you can take it from there, okay? Okay. So in the example of, um, of JFK, he went to the assassin. Yes. In the example of Martin Luther King, the assassination, assassin came to him. In the example of Robert F. Kennedy, the assassin came to him. In the example of John Lennon, the assassin came to him. So what are the odds, if there's a half a million people or so that lived in Dallas at the time, that the president just happened to drive by the one guy that wanted to kill him and had the well, means to do it? Well, uh, let's back up and talk about why JFK is in Texas. Okay. Uh, he wanted to come to Dallas to raise money for his presidential reelection campaign. Okay. So um, LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, and Governor Conley uh, advised against that just coming to Dallas because he hadn't been to Texas since November uh, 1961 when. Uh, Speaker Rayburn died. He came to Texas for the funeral. So they suggested, well, if you do come, you can't just hit Dallas. You got to hit some major cities. So the plan was November 20th, 1963, to visit San Antonio. Actually, Houston first, then San Antonio. Then the evening of the 21st, he spent the night in Fort Worth. And then we know about the uh, breakfast speech the next morning, which is the 22nd, that was a plan given by a Chamber of Commerce. He flies to Dallas the 22nd and goes, uh, 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 they take the motorcade through downtown right in front of the Texas School Book Depository. He was heading to the trademark to give a, a speech for uh, at lunchtime. And then that evening, the plans were to go to Austin the state capitol, and then spend the night at LBJ's ranch, but he didn't make it. Mm. Now, uh, I base primarily my belief today on the fact that there's never been any credible, credible evidence that's changed the fact that Lee Harvey Oswald shot President Kennedy and acted alone. There's okay. nothing credible. Now, let's back up to April 13th, 1963. April 13th, might have been April 10th. He tried to shoot General Edwin Walker, but missed. He missed. And you're but saying, I, you said Joe or you're saying General, right? 
general. Okay. When you said it, it sounded like you said Joe Edwin Walker. Yeah. So he was a he was a military general. Army? Yeah, Army, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, right, right wing extremists. Okay. And uh, he missed. He missed. So he actually purchased the rifle to shoot General General Walker. Missed. So how did they know that he did that crime? Well, he left a note uh, to Marina that they found later in a, in a, in a textbook. If, if I'm taken a, a prisoner, uh, uh, here's, here's my, I want you to keep my uh, personal papers. You can throw my clothes out. And uh, um, now there's, so that was not it, something that they found out until after the Kennedy. Correct. Correct. After, correct, after but then yeah. they tied him to that. Okay. Yeah, That's exactly. Okay. So uh, Marina testified before the Warren Commission that when Oswald heard on the radio that uh, Walker survived, he was very, very, very angry. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So that's a walker in Texas, but not a ranger. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good Correct. one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, uh, for your viewers, those that are interested in this subject, uh, myself and two buddies started a Facebook group. It's called JFK Truth Be Told. Uh, we're three years old now. We have 1,500 members. Every uh, fall around September, October, November, we meet up in Dallas and and have fellowship, if you will. Have a geek convention. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. So our, our group is made up of what we call lone gunmen, which that's what I am, that believe Oswald shot Kennedy, acted alone, okay? okay? Then there's those that believe in a conspiracy. They're part of the group too. What Number is the five, split? Sorry? What's the split out of 1,500? Uh, I, I would say uh, 1,200 are conspiracy believers. Okay. 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 And then so you're third, in the minority. Yeah. My, and, and that's the way it is across America, too, or the world, yeah. by the way. Then the third group are those who are undecided. They just don't know. Yeah. Okay. Now, if, if your viewers join our group, they're welcome to, no matter what your belief is. They just have to follow the rules. No cursing, no personal attacks. Other than that, let it rip. Would love to have you. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I just joined, Dave. Out of boy. Thank you, pal. Welcome. Joined. So you have to accept me, you know. Okay, so you've you've established that Oswald uh, attempted to murder a general that was in Texas prior to that. Correct. So he had the ability. And what was the failed attempt? Did the guy get shot and he just didn't die? No, he missed. The oh. bullet hit the windowsill. Yeah. And it did, uh, it did uh, some shrapnel got in uh, Walker's arm. Okay. And um, I've, I've, I've heard both sides. I've heard that, that that's matched up to Oswald's ammo. And then I heard it's not. But and maybe that was the next question. When did he buy the Manlikur Carcano? I know it was. Uh, I know yeah. it was mail order. Yeah, exactly. Not only that was mail order, but also the pistol he used to shoot uh, JD Tip at an hour and a half after he shot President Kennedy. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so both of those guns have been tied to him yes. in more than one way. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the exact date I got the receipt somewhere. It seems like it was uh, February or March of 1963. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but okay. So, when did they find out? They found out after he supposedly shot Kennedy. They found yeah. out this uh, information with the other guy. Okay. Yeah, he's already dead and gone. Matter of fact, Oswald's got two pretty good daughters. Um, one believes that Daddy did it, and the other one believes he didn't. Uh, and I believe. Um, Rachel lives in the Austin area. Uh, they're both married. Then June is around Fort Worth, Texas. They're they're both both done very well in life. That's good. What did Oswald say? What was his version? Well, he that that he did or didn't do it. 
I mean, what does he, he say he about that? He said it was a pat suit. Pat suit, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said he didn't do it. He said, yeah, he, he said, said, oh, yeah, naturally. Natural. Well, no, saying okay. you're a patsy doesn't mean you weren't involved and you didn't do it. Well, that means okay. that you were involved, but they're yeah. using me as a pawn is what that means to me. Okay, but but uh, uh, um, that well, that that reeks of conspiracy when he said those words. Well, you can say that, but they put him before live cameras. He could have spilled his guts. He he could have, but he never said anything. He just says, "I'm a patsy." Yeah. You know? But I wouldn't, I mean, I would hold my cards at that moment if it, you know, just put myself in that same position. You don't say anything other than I was set up. I was a patsy. Right, but why? Which I believe why? going yeah. to the MLK assassination, I believe, is what happened to James Earl Ray. I think he was set up. He thought he was part of a, of a group that was pulling this thing off, and then suddenly everybody started pointing to him and ran the other way. Yeah. And I just wonder if a similar thing happened to Oswald, and that's what would make him say those words. I, I don't say no. I don't know anything about uh, those other assassinations. Yeah, I understand. But, but uh, um, Oswald also turned away legal advice. The Dallas, the president of the Dallas Bar Association, visited Oswald in the jail cell, and he didn't want to talk to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, he was afraid at the time. I, I mean, if you think that, and well, the other thing that struck me that he said when they were talking to him was they asked him, did you kill the president? And he said, well, I hadn't been charged with it. He didn't say no. And no. he even said, did he say something like, well, that's no. what they say, but I haven't been charged with it. Something along those lines. Uh, exactly. You've been doing some studying. Well, I studied all the subjects. Yeah. He told Jim Lavelle. Jim Lavelle was a first officer to uh, interrogate Oswald. And you knew Jim. He, yeah, you had him insured, in right? Had him, had him insured. So like, for the people that don't know Jim, he's the guy with the with the hat and the suit that's escorting Oswald when he was assassinated. Okay. Yeah, handcuffed Oswald. The other yeah. gentleman was L.C. Graves uh, um, on the other side of him. Graves is the one that wrestled the gun out of Jack Ruby's hand, Sparky's hand. Mm -hmm. um, but Jim said on video with me, of course, I interviewed him back in 1996 on, on tape, on tape. <laughs> Cause Cause I, can't, I can't find. Uh, what? Ah, no. Yeah. So, you got to go well, find that man and get it on digital. Come on. I tell you. Yeah. So I, he said when he asked Oswald, why did you shoot the police officer? Because Oswald was brought in for shooting Officer J.D. Tippett, not, not Kennedy. Oswald said, I didn't shoot anyone. And to Jim, a seasoned uh, detective, knew that was a sign of guilt when he said, I didn't shoot anyone. Because mm -hmm. usually they'll personalize it. So he's, so he, that kind of raises suspicion. And what what do you mean? How would he say it if he didn't do it? What would well, he say? I, did, I didn't shoot the pig. I didn't shoot the cop. He said I didn't shoot anyone. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I could see uh, I could see that. Yeah, that's uh, not let, unusual. Let me say this: the Dallas Police Department had this case cinched in. Uh, uh, Captain Fritz's words, this case is cinched, cinched. by two o'clock Friday, they had Oswald, they had enough to arrest him, okay? So from two o'clock, 1963, November 22nd, until today, uh, it's 4.13 here in Las Vegas Pacific time, we're in, uh, we're in August, uh, till end of August, Nothing's changed. There's been no facts come forward to change the case. That any credible evidence to change the, what's happened. But but on the other side of that, playing devil's act, advocate there, Dave. If you look at the the, I mean, we're talking about the assassination of the president of the United States, and they solved it in less than twenty four hours. What are the odds of that? Highly. Uh, no, the odds of that are very low. So well, if he had to shoot Tippett, highly, how would they have found him? Yeah. If, they, if he did not shoot Tippett, he could have gone back to work the next day at the book depository and nobody would have ever known the difference. Well, right? 
that brings up this point. He okay. was the, he was the only employee to leave after the shooting of President Kennedy. Right, and he could have just said the next day he could have showed up like uh like George Costanza, yeah. you know, when he quit quit his job and then showed up the next day and said, "What are y'all talking about? I was just playing." And let me say, <laughs> I said, I'm scared. Let me, say to work. let me say this, Trey. Yeah. After President Kennedy is shot, Oswald leaves work. He gets on a bus. He doesn't ask anybody on the bus what all the commotion is. As he's walking from the depository to get on the bus, he doesn't ask anybody what's going on. He gets off the bus because it's stuck in traffic tray. He gets over and he he walks over to the to the, the cab stand, gets in the cab, doesn't ask the cab driver what's going on, watch all these sirens. Nothing. He drives. I mean, yeah. Look, I'm not arguing that he was a part of it. I I think he was definitely part of it, and he definitely thinks he's the shooter. But I think there could have been other shooters. And what I'm saying is, if if you were going to set this up and say, I needed it to be solved in less than 24 hours so the country doesn't go crazy, then I would find a, a, a guy that's a loner, that has ties to Russia, that has a gun, has a pistol, is crazy, he's already tried to kill a general and go, that's our guy. We're going to let him do whatever he thinks he's going to do. We'll make sure the job gets done. And then when it's done, in less than 24 hours, everything's going to point to him, and he's going down. We'll send I'm, somebody in to knock him off. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you said <laughs> I'm glad you said we're going to make sure the job gets done. Okay. Okay. So tell me about that. Okay, if if that's true, why would you put a junk rifle in his hand? Because he's not really the shooter. So he's just going to be there. He's the guy that <laughs> you're going to point at. It's we call it in the. Uh, in the in the uh we call it throwing the rock and hiding hand. So you throw the rock and hit somebody, you hide your hand and go, well, it was him. You <laughs> well, see what I'm saying? Well, well, then, go ahead, Trey. All right. So going back to him trying to shoot the general, was the general moving like John F. Kennedy would have been in a car moving at home. So he missed a guy at home in his house. And but he 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 hit J John F. Kennedy three times. And Get Kennedy was car. driving down the road. Yeah, you two, know, two time, two times. You know, that's a, that. I just was under. I was wondering. Well, he hit two times, but he shot three times. Yeah, there's that's a bullet okay. on the curb across the street. Yeah. There's a thing. but he did connect twice. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good, good, Trey. Good. Uh, well, believe it or not, he hit the window sill. There's there's pictures of it, and if you read a warrant commission uh, uh, testimonies. Uh, yeah, there's pictures in there, but uh, it, I, I don't know how much how much gun experience you guys have, but but if you're up high and you're shooting down, mm -hmm. it's easier to hit a target than straight. Yeah, and it's not it yeah. wasn't a crazy shot either. I the think it was not crazy. Like they make out like hard. it was a long ways away. It wasn't as hard to do. Um, and I have a lot of gun experience, um, and I and I know you shoot as well. Trey, do you shoot? I don't. Yeah. He you shoots need basketball. Be, you need to be shooting, Trey. We have to go to the range one day. Basketball, yeah. He shoots three points. Shoots, that's right. But you're right. He, it's a moving target, but it is down. Mm -hmm. And But that was a high-pressure situation because if he misses and the president uh -huh. rolls on, he's still sunk. I'm just saying, yeah. whoever, if he shot him, he must have been a good, good shooter. Uh, uh, shooting guns because and he had military. I pressed he, right? he had right. to make he had to make sure he connected. Yeah, he's a marksman. Yeah. Uh, let me throw this in for your viewers too. Um, he was kind of an odd duck. He would live in uh, Dallas Oak Cliff, actually, at a rooming house, 1026, 1026 North Beckley, Oswald Wood. He would uh, go home on the weekends with a co-worker, Buell Wesley Frazier, and spend a weekend with Marina and his daughter with Ruth Payne, who is a Quaker lady. And, and you knew Ruth Payne? Yeah, yes, that, yes, yes. And you've been to that house? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. In yeah. the house? In fact, yeah. matter of fact, she'll be there this November as well. Is she still with us? Yeah, 88. Wow. Yeah. So, hey, we need to go to Dallas. 
Let's yeah. go to Dallas yeah. because you said Oak Cliff. I found some Elvis locations in Oak Cliff, some really All right. stuff. So, so how right. far, Dave, right. is yeah. uh, is Ruth Payne's house from the Borden house? It's not far, right? Yeah, seven miles or so. Uh, so he would wait the whole weekend to keep from going seven miles a day? Well, he didn't have a driver's license. Okay, so so he would go home on the weekends, and then Sunday, Monday morning he'd ride back with a neighbor, a co-worker, Buell Wesley Frazier, back to the school book depository. But uh, Kennedy is coming through on Friday, so this week, guess what? He goes home to uh, Ruth Payne's house on Thursday. Why? To get his rifle. His rifle. They brought it back as, yeah. as curtain rods. Yeah, he says it's curtain rods. But let me say this. Uh, uh, um, as much shipping you do, small guy, Yeah. if you had long curtain rods uh, that you're taking from your shop to your, to your house, would you wrap it? Or would you just rubber band it? Or Not just or rubber band it. Yeah, he had it all covered up. What guy, what guy would wrap curtain rods? But now his excuse could have been that they were shipped and that was just the packaging they were in and he was going to take them out later or something, you know. Yeah, it could, could very well yeah. be, but there's yeah. no shipping label and, and yeah. the paper and the tape and everything else matches up to the packing material at the school book depository. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, look at, like I say, I don't doubt, and I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm not saying that at all. I, I, I'm glad you're standing on your theory, but all I'm saying is that um, he was a part of it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But when he said he was a patsy, um, I just don't understand what that even, you know, he he didn't say I didn't do it. He said I was a patsy. He figured out that I'm the guy locked up and everybody else that was helping me, they're all gone. <laughs> So well, here I am. He didn't, he didn't shoot anybody. That's exactly what happened yeah. to James O'Reilly. Yeah. He was in jail the third day and went, holy crap, I'm in jail. And they told me I was part of this. And all the people that helped me do this are all gone. Yeah. And he started well, singing like a canary. Well, what, uh, uh, who, then if you don't think it was St. Oswald, then who was it? Oh, no. I, I think yeah. that it was a, a hit of some sort. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do you think the government's not capable of knocking the president off? Well, uh, did you know there's 300 people involved in the, uh, putting the Warren Commission together? Yeah, I knew there was a lot, and that was something yeah. I was going to bring up. I don't think yeah. that 300 people could be corrupt. Yeah, but how's 300 that, people? Hey, Trey, how's 300 people going to cover up a conspiracy? But the but they those 300 people didn't personally investigate it. What they did was took the information that was given to them and digested it. So the corruption could have been in the in the stuff given to them. To me, it's strange that it was solved within, like you said, hours. Yeah. yeah. Hour and I mean, a half. There's murders yeah. that happen every day that are not solved ever. Like, why Why yeah. was he not better? Like, I mean, if, if you're going to kill the president, like, you got to make sure you don't mess up as far so, as you can So, So well, look at it this way. He's not smart enough to have a driver's license, but he's an expert marksman. But he's not smart enough to be able to get away. You, you see what I'm saying? With I mean, yeah. look, what you do is you shoot and you vapor. You just disappear. Yeah. What Trey just made a comment. What what was it? Your last comment? Yeah. I was going to piggyback on that. Why was he not smart enough to, you know, if you're gonna do that, you gotta be smart enough to make sure you don't get caught. No, that wasn't it. It was something else. That's, was that's gonna, what I'm saying, shooting yeah. vapor. Yeah. You know, you're just gone. Uh, yeah. Well, um, he shoots, he well, goes home, he shows back up at the depository Monday morning like nothing ever happened. Nobody would know the difference. Uh, buddy, you know, he left that drew suspicion to uh, tell me again. Yeah, he left work, so that's suspicious too. Yeah, but I would yeah. just say, man, it scared me. The president got killed, he was right here. I wanted to go home to my family. It was. I was afraid something oh, I happened. Know it was, Trey, Trey, I appreciated Trey saying he shot the president. He did. He didn't shoot JFK. He shot the president. Yeah, and yeah, he's he's the president. Yeah. Now, did you know there's eyewitnesses? I saw him shoot uh, Officer J.D. Tippett. How many? 
There was witnesses. Oh, I thought you said eight witnesses. No, no, no. Okay, so Ella Markham was one. Okay. A cab driver um, that was eating his lunch on the corner right there saw him. And uh, Ted Calloway heard the shots, saw Oswald kind of slinking away with the pistol in his hand. And then Johnny Calvin Brewer, the store shoe store manager, he is acting very suspicious as cops are running up and down Jefferson Street. Uh, Oswald ducks in the window and he acts like he's looking at shoes and then slinks down and goes into the tech school book depository. Uh, Brewer calls the cops, points him out. Cops come. Oswald gets up and wants to fight him, starts punching. So he ended up back at the depository? Did I, did I say that I meant Texas yeah, Theater? You meant the theater. Yeah, text theater. Oh, okay. Yeah, you said depository. And I'm like, did I yeah, miss no. part of the story? And he ended no. up all the way back there. No. So where did okay. he shot? Uh, he shot him through a window on what floor? Sixth. Sixth it's, floor. What window was it? It was the far, southwest right? corner. It was southwest where he works at. Yeah. To the right. Mm -hmm. So it would have been at an angle like that. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah. My, but my question is. Again, I'm not saying that Oswald was not involved. I'm not saying he didn't shoot at the president. I'm not saying he didn't shoot Tippett. But, I'm just saying that there was other people involved that got him there. But I do think uh, uh, one thing that I would say that would be uh, in your in your your theory's favor, and that is that if he was shooting for, if he was really the shooter, they would have had a better gun for him. Yes. So here's a question. Forensically, do the bullets that they recovered match the gun? And yeah. hold on just one second. When uh, JFK was on the um, on the gurney, there was one solid bullet that was almost like a perfect bullet for them to match to the gun. Left that when they lifted him up, there's a there's it's almost like the uh, uh, when they uh, when Oswald, I mean uh, James Earl Ray, left all of the things that tied him to the crime with his fingerprints all over it, right by a door. When they lift JFK up, there's a perfect bullet that matches the caliber and can be tied uh, to that gun that yeah. has no, that looks like it was never fired into something. So can I correct, can I correct you? Yeah. Tell me. JFK uh, was carried in. And hold on. That's the president to you, Dave. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> the, the gurney you're talking about is John Conley. Oh, okay. But oh, there was a, but, there was a yeah, bullet. Yeah. A perfect it, it, bullet. Well, no, if you look at it, it's deformed. Okay. Bit. You got to remember that bullet was going fast enough to cause damage, but slow enough not to be deformed because it's tumbling. It goes through Kennedy's neck, soft tissue, starts tumbling, hits uh, calmly back here on the, right in this area, mm -hmm. came out under his right nipple, into his wrist, into his left thigh. I've, I've measured those bullet holes, and, and that the, the Conley suit is in the, the, the uh, State Archives in Austin, so I've done all that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the story on that bullet. It actually came it came off Conley's uh, gurney. Okay, but so it just fell out of his thigh, or you think when they were moving in, it just kind of like pressing a, yeah. pressing a zit, it just popped mm -hmm. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had plenty of those in my life. Yeah, did that did that give you a visual tray? Yeah, I did. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. taking it all in. Yeah. Man. But, but, anyway, you know, bullet, also, also, but did, did they match that bullet to the gun? Oh, okay. The uh um yes, uh the ballistics goes back to that bullet. Now the sad thing is when Conley died, everybody wanted to get into his wrist and get those fragments out. But mm -hmm. the family didn't want to do that. So he went to his grave with those fragments. And he's buried in Austin. At so is it because the family knew that Connolly could be part of this thing and they didn't want any extra uh, who, evidence? Who knows? Who, who knows? But majority of your viewers, Spa Guy, majority of, and Trey, ma majority of your viewers are going to think Oswald didn't do that, didn't shoot anybody. Yeah, I think he was yeah. there and shot. There's so, no doubt about that in my mind. So the question uh, is, was he the lone shooter or were there other people? Yeah, uh, most of your viewers on both your channels won't believe 
Yeah. I don't have anything to do with it. And I know you don't like comparing uh, 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 assassinations, but the reason that I'm comparing, I like to compare the MLK assassination is because that was a, go- I, in my opinion, was a government hit. And I think that, that his could have been a government hit. And in, um, in the MLK assassination, something that struck me happened, and it actually happened in Birmingham, Alabama, and that was he went and bought a gun with a scope. He bought, I think it was off the top of my head, was a two two three, And the next day, he came back and exchanged it for a thirty out 6 I believe that the reason he did that was he bought the two two three and the scope. He tells the people that he's working with what gun he bought. They called a guy that's actually going to shoot and he goes no i'm using the 30 out six and they go oh you got to go back and match the weapon so you got to go back and get something that is the correct caliber and the correct weapon so that ballistically this all works out that's got nothing to do with this but one thing well because that makes sense to me so what it has to do with this is in your particular case and this is a uh you know the benjamin franklin theory where you you put uh uh the trues and falses or pluses and minuses, and you start making marks. This is a mark on the plus side for you, okay? And that I would use be- that to sell insurance. Tell me again? I use that to sell insurance. Oh, you do? You use the uh, Benjamin Franklin? Yeah. Um, and it works. I've used it before myself. And uh, <laughs> But I've never scammed anybody and sold them insurance. But that's, hey, that's, hey. That's, uh, oh. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> that's okay. I'm I, messing I with him. I'm, I'm picking on him, friends. I resemble that remark. He does. And so uh, if if that was the case, they would not have given a Manlicker Carcano to a sniper. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they would have matched the gun. So what is the caliper of the Manlicker Carcano? 6.5. Okay. So are there other brands of guns that would shoot a 6.5 or is that just know. that gun? I don't know. So that but you know, if that. If he's a true patsy, why wouldn't you uh, sabotage his rooming house with maps of Dealey Plaza with a red uh, X with a circle around it saying uh, uh, kill zone and everything else? And that's a, and that's a good yeah. point. Yeah. And uh, But they might have thought he was enough of a bumbling idiot. He would figure out how to get caught <laughs> all by himself. Now, there's people, you know, a trade, as you Or if it was the it. government, they knew who it was. So they were going to find him one way or the other. Well, you got to think think about that. Um, John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King during that time were probably the two most outspoken, powerful people, right? Yeah. Both of them get taken out pretty much in a similar way. Right, Dave? Uh, As as Trey Trey looks at our group, and if there's somebody in there calling Oswald a bumbling idiot, like small guy did, there's going to be some folks that's going to protect him. That's going to fight back. What? No, no, no. He had a, uh, he, he learned to speak Russian. He didn't even have a driver's license. <laughs> Good God. Why didn't I, he have a driver's, I had a driver's license? license when I was 16. Why didn't he have a driver's license? Well, the truth is Ruth was giving him driving lessons down at the Kroger around the corner. Uh, she drove us by or as I was actually driving a van and she says, turn right over right here. This is where I gave Oswald driving lessons. So he was working on getting his driver's license. Okay. So I want you to picture this expert marksman. He can't drive. Well, what about people living in New York? <laughs> people in New York don't have a DL. I, yeah. I, I don't know. People. That just strikes me as odd. How old was Oswald? 24. No, he was young, so that's relatively young. Yeah. Birthday, October. And I'm not saying that means anything. I'm just saying that. When you think about it, driving is easy. Expert marksman is not. Uh, I can tell look, you. I can drive, yeah. and I and you're you're my actually my insurance guy. That's and the same I thing don't about it. Drive ever? I, I don't drive. drive. Fast. I don't drive no, fast. I don't I don't with drive. You scare me. I don't talk on the phone and drive. <laughs> hey, I don't drive fast hey, cars. Hey, 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 folks! It's all I can do to survive this. This guy drives with his left knee, eats a Chick-fil-A, talks on the phone, and drinks a milkshake. It's and, and you're forgetting, Diamond Dave, he jumps out and tosses combs at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> you know, the only video, the only video that you know what that they have. So yeah. So uh 
He but, tells uh, that. <laughs> so we're getting off the uh, subject here. Yeah. Um, so, but I think all these points that have been brought up are valid points. What are your thoughts, Trey? I mean, yeah, they're valid points. And, and my thing is like, um, why, why did, why did the guy, why was it closed within hours? Why was there no more? Let's make sure we're right here. Let's really, let's investigate everything we can, but no, we got the guy. It's finished. It's history. And it's been like that since that afternoon at 2 p.m. And, and so that's a great point right there, Dave. And the point is this. So he did it. We point all of our fingers at him. We kill him so he can't testify. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So now let's get into Jack Ruby. Okay, then. Okay. And we don't have much time left. So uh, okay, we do a quick Jack he Ruby. He said we, we, uh, Jack Ruby, Sparky killed uh, – all and I love his steakhouse, by the way. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, thanks for dinner. Uh, yeah. Well, I've yeah. taken you to Jack Ruby's Steakhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, okay. Ruby uh, allegedly was connected to the mob. So uh, a lot of your viewers going to Oh, believe it was a mob that. hit. Is that what you're saying? Well, the, a lot of your viewers are going to believe that. But uh, uh, Ruby shot... Uh, uh, Oswald enacted again alone on the spur of the moment. Okay, and you lined out the reason that you think that. Okay, uh, uh, Chief Curry. Details. Yeah, Chief Curry, the Dallas police chief, on a Saturday night, uh, Saturday about midnight, he told the press to go home and get some rest. If you come back, actually, this is yeah Saturday. I think I said Saturday. Go get some rest. If you come back the next morning by ten a.m., you won't miss anything which would be Sunday, that was the time they're going to move Oswald after 10. Uh, Jack Ruby sound asleep at 10 a.m. 10 so if he's hired or assigned to kill Oswald, why is he asleep? He gets up by a phone call, uh, goes for a swim, exercises, takes a long route downtown to, to the Western Union to wire money to one of his strippers so she could pay her rent. A clickety-clack. Yeah, yeah, and he comes out the front door, looks looks left, he sees the crowd, and he goes, "Oh yeah, all the way." So, he, yeah, so that means we got three minutes left. Go ahead. Okay, so he casually walks down the basement ramp. Uh, uh, Oswald's coming out, shoots him. Jim Lavelle was handcuffed to Oswald. He told me on the other end that uh, Oswald was on the elevator to go. And he wanted a sweater. It was kind of chilly. So they got him off the elevator, ele elevator uncuffed, got a sweater on, recuffed, back down. That very moment when Ruby walks up, shoots him. So you can't plan a conspiracy any better than that. It's been a real pleasure. No, it's uh, – I, I, but finish the story. I mean – no, that's it. I want yeah, to – Yeah, but you need to, to – uh, you need to expand on what you just said. Or tell us – you're saying this, but you under you assuming everybody could see what you're seeing in your head. Expand on that just a little bit. Well, uh, so Ruby, but those guys knew Ruby, so he could walk up in there. It was not unusual for him to be there. That's very true. Okay, uh, but when he's at the Western Union, click it, click. Yeah, he's in no hurry. No hurry. He's small talked an elderly lady. It's time stamped. The the twenty five dollar uh, money transfer was eleven seventeen or eleven sixteen. He shoots Oswald eleven eighteen eleven nineteen. No hurries and no hurries. Not. Do no you hurry. think that it was strictly just a crime yes. of passion? He yes. saw him had his gun and said that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he also had his dog with him, Sheba, in the car. Okay, so, so let me ask you this: if yeah. He was had ties with the mob. Why would he be upset that Kennedy was shot? Because the mob hated Kennedy. Well, that's his attorney that said he loved JFK. But when when Kennedy was going on a motorcade through Dallas, Ruby's over at Dallas News placing an ad for his for his club. He went even went even around the motorcade. We got yeah. thirty seconds. Okay, but that, and and that's a good point. If he was such a big JFK JFK fan, and he was so mad that he got killed, he wouldn't go see him in his town, and he could just walk over there and look. Well, 
Uh, you got to remember, that happened Friday. So Ruby's at the Dallas Police Department Saturday all day. And he's hearing cops saying, and other citizens saying, somebody ought to kill that rat. Somebody ought to kill him. And and it would influence him. And, and he, he, hmm. he, acted, he acted out. But wouldn't the mob be mad at him? Well, the mob wouldn't use a guy like Sparky. He's a loose cannon. Yeah. And, you know, um, uh, uh, Jimmy Snow, Hank Snow's son, knew him. Do you know that that uh, Hank Snow would go do horse shows in there? You know, he would have the show the trick that did all the tricks, and he would do them in the carousel club. Guess who? He told was, me about that. Jimmy did. You remember that, Trey? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Remember that. Here, uh, guess which he hall star was a performer at his club, but not a stripper, not a stripper, but a yeah. comedian. comedian. Oh, that that would be um, uh, Junior Samples. No, female. The lady, yeah. And what is her name? She lives here in, in Nashville. Um, um, I could see her face, but I can't call her name. I've met her. Wait. Yeah, yeah, she's lost a whole lot of weight. Um, yeah. The the opposite of Junior Samples. What's what, I can't yeah, think of. It I can't think of it either. Uh, I wrote this note as well. Did you know? Do you guys know who Lurch is? Who? Lurch. Oh, Adam, Lurch. Yeah, from the Adam Adam family? family. Yeah. You rang. Did you, did the, yeah, you know do that again. I do. I know. Okay. okay. Well, he was a reporter for WFAA in Dealey Plaza that day. What? what? That's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a great, great detail. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Was that, that is a, a great, great detail. Was that girl's Lurch. name like Mother something or? No. And we can't stop this podcast until we know. Start. It starts with an L. Uh, Lulu. 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 Yeah. Lulu Roman. Thank you, Trey. Yeah. Lulu, because I at uh, at George Lindsay's uh, at George Lindsay's funeral, I remember they brought her up at the funeral. Yeah. Because Were she you there, Trey? Yeah, I was there, and uh, Ray right. Stevens, Ray Stevens perform sang, and I think she sang. Hmm. Lulu, I met her at the Hee Haw reunion, the fifty year reunion, when I went there with Diana Goodman. Hey, uh, yeah, seriously, your viewers, if they say something nice about my video, the first three, if they'll message me what size shirt they wear, I'll, I'll send them one. Okay. I want one. Well, they come out to the Las Vegas. Handling. <laughs> when, yeah, they'll have to pay the shipping and handle. When Trey and I come out to Las All Vegas, right. I'll get one. All but right. I need something to wash my car with. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dave. Yeah. You rang. Yeah. All these people that are in your cars, if you have subwoofers, it's just rattling the car right now. You rang. Hey, it's been a real pleasure, guys. Thank you, Dave. Uh, this is fun, Dave. and I hope you don't think I beat up on you too much. It was, uh, uh, and, and I mean, look, you may be right. I don't know. And uh, you've told me some new things that I hadn't heard before today. Me See, too. What I love is he knows the details of it, and that's what that's what makes the difference. And you searched out all the details, and in your opinion, it was the lone gunman. Yeah, I wish we had more time. There was a whole lot of stuff we didn't talk about. We'll do another right. one soon. We'll do another one. And um, yeah. and we need to let, write down some bullet points for that so we can just kind of stay with some certain things. Because all we're doing is just right now just kind of getting the basics of the story out. Tell us again how to find your um, your group, your Facebook group. Did you say bullet points? Bullet points. No okay. pun intended. Okay. You uh, rang. <laughs> It's uh, it's on Facebook, JFK Truth Be Told. Okay. All right. And also, uh, click on Famous Graves with Diamond Dave. And uh, I, I got YouTube. a lot of, yeah, on YouTube, I got a lot of Famous Grave videos, inventors, uh, uh, sports stars, celebrities. Uh, uh, it, it's just chock full of interesting individuals. So I appreciate if you would click and watch some vids and subscribe and subscribe why because i need the money diamond dave diamond yeah. dave y'all yeah always a pleasure guys yeah appreciate you dave all right man all right we're out tighten up